Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, we are looking at some interesting uh, flow features in uh, high Mach number flows. Um, uh, some uh, discussions were had on hypersonic flows which are at very high uh, Mach numbers uh, where some special physical features uh, become important. Uh, we also had a discussion on uh, interactions of uh, oblique shocks of different kinds they also lead to interesting flow features and there are some important design considerations also that figure when you consider shock shock uh, interactions. Now, uh, now we will see what happens when shocks come close to the body and they interact with uh, uh, the layer where uh, viscosities or uh, the effects of viscosity is really important which is the uh, boundary layer. So, we look at uh, shock boundary layer interactions. Uh, in majority of the discussions uh, we had in this course, we had not touched upon uh, viscous uh, uh, flows, we were largely in viscid. Uh, that, uh, that is how generally the flow uh, fields over bodies are described, because in general the viscous forces are relatively small in comparison to uh, inertial forces uh, which is uh, typical for any high Reynolds number flow. Uh, therefore, uh, in majority of the flow it, it we can consider uh, that the flow is uh, inviscid, but uh, this consideration becomes a problem because always uh, there is a drag associated with any body in flow, but if we do not consider viscosity at all. Uh, then if you consider a flat plate, uh, it should not have any drag at all, but uh, that is not the case, you always have drag. Uh, this, this was the famous uh, D. Lambert's uh, paradox. Uh, uh, this was a consequence of neglecting viscous forces and uh, it was uh, Prantl who provided a method uh, to overcome this situation by uh, introducing the concept of a uh, boundary layer, a, a layer which is close to the wall uh, where uh, viscous forces are important, viscosity plays a dominant role. Uh, then from that point onwards all analysis of uh, fluid flows has uh, typically taken place by considering two uh, regions, outer inviscid flow uh, that is over here, uh, high Reynolds number flow outer flow we can essentially consider to be inviscid and we have all the inviscid uh, methods to uh, be applied over here. Uh, while at the wall very close to the wall what is shown here is like a zoomed inversion near the wall there is uh, a boundary layer that develops okay, where viscous forces are important. At the wall, uh, it is a no slip condition that is velocity is 0 at the wall relative to the wall. Okay. So, V is equal to 0 at wall okay. and uh, slowly the velocity uh, increases gradually and then finally reaches uh, the inviscid velocity at the outer uh, edge of the boundary layer. Uh, if you consider just a flat plate and a uniform flow occurring over it, uh, then uh, this uh, velocity goes all the way from 0 to uh, the uniform inviscid velocity u infinity, uh, uh, which is very close to the edge of the boundary layer. So, you consider such uh, bifurcation, uh, such uh, two regions outer inviscid flow, inner viscous flow. Uh, the boundary layer is uh, where we consider uh, viscous flow. So, uh, 
what is the advantage of this kind of uh, um, an approximation? Uh, it allows us to uh, simplify the uh, Navier-Stokes equations a uh, great deal. Uh, uh, if you consider, uh, we are considering in order to understand what uh, uh, a boundary layer is, let us just consider the incompressible flow and uh, 2D uh, Navier-Stokes equations for an example. This is the continuity equation dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou y equal to 0. And uh, these two uh, are the u momentum and v momentum or x momentum and uh, y momentum equations uh, in x and y directions uh, respectively. Uh, now, uh, here if we had uh, considered that uh, there was no viscosity at all, then uh, all these terms would just go away and we would be just left with the inviscid part, but that would not give us any drag at all. Therefore, we have to consider viscosity, uh, but what is it that is really important? This is what we would like to know when we consider a boundary layer kind of approach. To do this, uh, we will just do an order of magnitude analysis uh, to know what uh, terms in this. These terms are just the convective acceleration terms, this is the pressure term this is due to viscous forces. Now, we should know which of these terms are important. To understand this, uh, we say that uh, uh, the velocity u uh, goes scales or goes according to u infinity that is the outer stream u infinity. Uh, while uh, we now say that there is a very thin layer which is uh, uh, just above the surface of the plate, a thin layer develops which is the boundary layer. So, uh, we consider that in the y direction, the important uh, length scale is the boundary layer thickness delta, okay. while along x direction the length scale is just L. Uh, now, if you consider the, uh, the continuity equation, then uh, here, uh, if you do the order of magnitude analysis, you find that u goes as u infinity uh, while x goes as L. Well, if you consider uh, v, let us say there is a proper scale for v, which we can say is some v star by delta, okay, because y goes as delta. So, from the continuity equation, we find that we should have a scale that there is a v velocity uh, in the boundary layer which has a scale which has a scale u infinity delta by l and delta that is uh, the boundary layer thickness is small compared to l so there is a very small uh, v velocity outside here in the uh, free stream it was just a uniform flow parallel to the wall and now once the boundary layer forms, we find that there is a v velocity that is produced. As a consequence, the streamlines will shift away from the wall and uh, this boundary layer thickness grows. Now, uh, if you consider the x momentum equation, then you similar scaling you can do mm, and you find that the first term goes as u infinity square by L second term goes as u infinity square by L. Uh, there is the dou p by dou x term. You have another term u infinity uh, by L square here, another term u infinity by delta square in the y direction which corresponds to dou square u by dou y square and they are multiplied by nu which is the uh, kinematic viscosity. Now, nu is very small. So, if we consider this multiplication, we, uh, if you multiply a such a small number with u infinity by L square, this becomes a very small number. So, this can be neglected in relation to other terms, but if you consider nu multiplying by u infinity by delta square, here delta is also small. So, uh, you find that uh, this term uh, u, nu u infinity by delta square is significant 
and it will be of the same order as u infinity square by L. Therefore, you can get the relation that delta by L should approximately go as 1 by square root of Reynolds number. So, uh, the, uh, when you go to high Reynolds number delta by L is very small or you have small boundary layer thickness. Now, if you consider the y momentum equations, uh, then what you find from uh, such an order of magnitude analysis is all velocity related terms are very small. They have you uh, delta being multiplied everywhere and therefore, these terms are uh, very small. Therefore, we get that dou p by dou y that is uh, pressure variation across the boundary layer in y direction uh, pressure is constant. Therefore, this leads to the set of boundary layer equation which are much simpler compared to the full Navier-Stokes equation which is continuity equation x momentum equation. In x momentum equation uh, the shear stress term con consists of only variation of u in y. So, tau wall is nu du by dou u by dou y at the wall. Okay, so, the shear stress the important term is dou square u by dou y square and uh, across the, um, uh, the uh, particular uh, across the y direction uh, pressure is constant that is the third equation. Uh, therefore, the pressure gradient dou p by dou x now p is then a function of x only it is not function of y. Therefore, dou p by dou x can be written is d p by d x which is imposed from the uh, outer inviscid flow uh, where you can evaluate it using Euler's equation or any inviscid formulation you can get this pressure variation. Uh, so, this is the uh, boundary layer equations so, and they are much simplified compared to uh, Navier-Stokes equation and this is what is normally used. You consider an outer inviscid flow from which uh, pressure applied on the boundary layer and hence the body can be calculated while the viscous forces that appear on the body can be calculated by using the boundary layer equations. So, here uh, is a uh, the picture of the boundary layer visualized on a flat plate. Uh, uh, this is taken from alb album of fluid motion and you can see uh, a nice development of the boundary layer over here uh, which is of this kind. Okay, and the same kind of profile can be obtained by solving the boundary layer equations for a uh, flat plate. This represents the solution for a flat plate. This is u by u uh, in non-dimensional terms, uh, the y coordinate written in uh, non-dimensional terms. And uh, uh, so, for a laminar flow one can evaluate what is uh, the coefficient of friction. It becomes a function only of uh, Reynolds number along x direction and the boundary layer thickness it goes as 4.4 by square root of R e. This uh, from our simple um, analysis also we got uh, order of magnitude analysis also we got that it goes as 1 by square root of uh, Reynolds number. Why did we have all these discussions? Because an important uh, phenomena occurs around bodies. Uh, when there is uh, pressure gradient. In case of a flat plate, there is no pressure gradient, it is just a flat plate. But uh, other bodies for example, airfoils or uh, spheres, cylinders, here initially the flow accelerates um, for a flow which is coming in this direction. Initially flow accelerates and uh, thereafter uh, in the uh, rearward portion the flow uh, decelerates. Then the boundary layer is affected due to these uh, uh, changes in velocities. The change in velocity produces uh, changes in pressure. When flow accelerates, pressure decreases. So, you have a dp by dx which is uh, less than 0. Uh, and when flow um, decelerates, uh, pressure increases, dp by dx is 
uh, greater than 0 uh, what happens to boundary layer as a consequence of this uh, pressure gradient. So, here you uh, find uh, that at the wall if you see it is really uh, because at the wall uh, you have the terms u du by dx plus v do u by do y is equal to minus 1 by rho do p by do x plus nu do square u by do y square at the wall u and v are zeros so they are zero so uh, this term is zero so basically it's a uh, balance between pressure forces and uh, uh, the shear forces or uh, the viscous forces at the wall and uh, if you look at it if uh, uh, there is a uh, accelerating flow that is called as a you know, favorable pressure gradient to dou p by dou x is less than 0 you find that dou square u by dou y square is also less than uh, 0 ok. But uh, as if dou p by dou x is uh, greater than 0 then dou square u by dou y square is also uh, greater than 0. Uh, now, dou square u by dou y square is a grade is a derivative of dou u by dou y uh, which is uh, shear stress is proportional to dou u by dou y. If uh, dou square u by dou y square is increasing then the slope at uh, the wall should keep increasing it should keep uh, increasing and uh, mm, so in uh, accelerating flow. Uh, the boundary layer thickness actually uh, reduces. You, you can also see it as a consequence of what happens to v velocity uh, because v velocity is uh, negative du by dx dy is just uh, uh, from the, uh, the continuity equation. So, if uh, du by dx increases uh, that is an accelerating flow v decreases but if du by dx decreases which is uh, a decelerating flow v increases increase in v means increase in boundary layer thickness. Now, we find that if pressure gradient is uh, increasing or it is adverse pressure gradient then du by dy dou u by dou y is increasing. So, the slope keeps increasing and it can at the max reach a limit where uh, du by dy is equal to 0 and further if there is an increase in uh, pressure the flow cannot maintain the tangency condition and it just separates from the wall ok. So, the flow separates from the wall and there is a reverse flow that occurs. This kind of flow phenomena is known as uh, flow separation and this is very important in fluid dynamics because it gives rise to large pressure, um, pressure due to uh, pressure drag. Uh, due to separation there are several instances all of these again from album of uh, fluid motion for example here you have a airfoil uh, in uh, uniform flow and the uh, streamlines are made visible using a certain dyes and uh, here you find that the flow separates at this point it is no longer as uniform as it is over here and here the flow separates. Here there is a wall this is a wall which has a certain contour and the flow separates from this point and there is a region where there are a lot of recirculating vortices. Similarly, a cylindrical flow this is very familiar uh, many of you should have come across this and here flow separates and there is large region of recirculation and the separation leads to large increase in uh, drag. Uh, similarly, you find on a uh, flat plate and why we did all this discussion is because this phenomena is important in the context of compressible boundary layers and shocks and how they interact with boundary layers. When we come to compressible uh, boundary layers so, here density is not a constant otherwise the essential concept is all the same it is remaining the same, uh, but density is a variable also uh, we have to consider the energy equation. So, if we consider the energy equation 
uh, which is over here. Another term which becomes important is the viscous dissipation that is conversion of kinetic energy into heat energy or internal energy due to uh, viscous effects okay, due to uh, uh, dissipation. So, this uh, term becomes important as a consequence temperatures increase in the boundary layer uh, inside a compressible boundary layer. Therefore, uh, the wall heat transfer uh, that is K dou T by dou Y. So, the an appropriate wall heat transfer becomes important. Uh, so, when you consider a compressible boundary layer it is not only the uh, momentum equation you have to consider uh, the energy equation and variation of density. Also uh, the uh, transport coefficients which is uh, viscosity and thermal conductivity they become strong functions of uh, temperature. So, uh, all these additional uh, features have to be considered. Now, if you, uh, these are uh, calculations of the boundary layer in a compressible domain and if you see these uh, calculations uh, here we have to use an appropriate uh, boundary condition for temperature at the wall or heat transfer at the wall. Uh, this is for an adiabatic wall then you see that as Mach numbers increases the boundary layer thickness is increasing significantly. So, uh, this is Mach number 0, this is the thickness for Mach number 0 uh, delta 0 while this is Mach number 20. So, you can see uh, that Mach number 20 is so much larger than Mach number for 0 and you need to consider an appropriate boundary condition. So, thermal boundary layers are also important and they also increase with increase in Mach number. So, boundary layer thickness increases significantly with a Mach number. Now, if you consider an adiabatic wall uh, no a cooled wall that is a heat transfer is occurring where uh, a temperature uh, heat is being removed uh, then uh, what happens is there is viscous dissipation that is happening in the boundary layer. So, temperature uh, increases in the boundary layer, but at the same time uh, heat is being removed at the wall. So, a maximum temperatures occur somewhere in uh, between within the thickness of the boundary layer. But the essential uh, fact that a boundary layer thickness increases with Mach number remains the same, but now you see that the Mach number thickness uh, um, the boundary layer thickness is lower in comparison to adiabatic wall. Uh, so, the physical insights that we gain from uh, these uh, discussions is in the context of compressible boundary layers, the boundary layer thickness increases rapidly with Mach number, uh, temperature increases in the boundary layer due to viscous uh, dissipation. Then uh, if you cool the wall boundary layer thickness uh, reduces, uh, the same kind of uh, um, effects happen to uh, both the skin friction coefficient as well as the heat transfer uh, which you see here, here uh, uh, corresponds to Stanton number. So, in general the kind of uh, increase that is found is uh, boundary layer thickness goes as uh, Mach number square by square root of uh, Reynolds number. Now, in the next class having understood um, a little bit about um, boundary layers which is a total topic in itself. Uh, let us see what happens when a shock uh, comes and interacts with the boundary layer in uh, uh, in high Mach number flows in the next class. Thank you.